Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Saturday, April 13th, and we are here trying to help you make better financial decisions or maybe walk you through a big decision you're making. And along the way, we might uncover something that you may not have even thought about. We are here to just help you out, maybe give you a boost or a pat on the back. And hopefully by the end of a conversation with us, you're feeling a little bit better. If you've got a financial issue you'd like to discuss, just go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, write us a note and let us know if you would be willing to come on the air live. While you're on the website, don't forget to check out all of the content that lives there. There's the blog, there's the free weekly newsletter, there are videos and resources and more. Just bookmark jillonmoney.com and you'll be all set. Okay, today we are talking to Robert, who's on the line from California. I'm looking to understand what I can do to take advantage of uh, how to large portion where I wasn't working. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a technical engineer. I do uh, technical sales. Okay. And you're working now? I am. How much do you earn? I make about 160 plus uh, bonus. It brings it up to about 210. Are you married, single? Uh, married with three boys. How old? 23, 21, and 16. Oh, 16. Whoops. Okay. So you've got <laughs> one more to go through college. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do you, so you just started this new job, right? Yes. Are you using the retirement plan yet? I am. It opened up straight away. I started contributing 15%, but then I realized that I could do some backdoor Roth conversions and take advantage of that at a low uh, tax rate. Tell me a little bit about, um, first of all, let's go, does your uh, spouse work? Off and on. If you look at the tax this calendar year, how much do you think you will have made for this calendar year between the two of you, unemployment, new job, no job? What, what do you think? It's, it's going to be close to 50000 I did something. I, I went ahead and set my 401k contribution uh-huh. to 75%. Okay. Already. Uh, yeah. I was okay. like, okay, I don't need the capital to support us necessarily. So I thought, well, I'll do this now. I can always turn it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Okay. How much money do you guys have in non-retirement assets? So savings, you know, the emergency fund or any taxable investment accounts? Yeah, just under $2 million in non-retirement. Mm, how does it split up? Tell me a little bit about that. What's in, what's in cash? Um, you know, I don't carry much in cash. I have our investors. I tell them when I need to do any kind of withdrawals and, and they manage that. And this mm-hmm. is... Uh, um, through Lido Advisors, and it's all at Fidelity. So, okay, how much do you pay for that service? Point nine percent. Okay, not nothing. What's in pre-tax investments? Um, whether that's an old four hundred one k IRAs, what what's floating out there? Yeah, we have four hundred thousand in a rollover IRA, and I just started this four hundred one k, so just three thousand. And that's it. That's it in pre-tax. Yeah, and then we have Roth. Okay, tell me what you have in Roth. Um, Roth, we have about three hundred thousand there. Very nice. It's funny that you did you not have a retirement plan for some time. Like you have, it seems to me. How old are you? Uh, Fifty-seven. Given your age, it's funny you have your more of your money in non-retirement assets than in retirement assets, which is interesting. You know, so we sold a house. Uh-huh. So we were kind of we were kind of house poor for a long time. And so we were struggling to uh, both make payments and put away money in IRA. So I see. All right. Well, that's good. And where do you live now? You have a house that you own or are you renting? What are you doing? Uh, We're renting now. Do you have any aspirations to buy? Is some of that $2 million going to go into a home? Possibly. We did the evaluation with our financial planners and they we said, well, like in the next five years, if we put away 500000 to another house, how would we look? Without buying a house, we have $8.5 million at age 85. And with buying a house, we run out of money at age 85. So wow. I've always, I've always thought houses were great and we have done so well with them. 
but listening to your show, you're not as bullish on real estate as I was. And now I'm thinking, huh? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's weird because I always think that the numbers kind of throw us off. I'll give you an example. I'll never forget. My father would say, you know, we bought this house for $35,000, right? Okay. Yeah. I know dad. It was 1963, right? And so like if you inflation adjust it, the fact that they sell it for a half a million dollars 25 years later, it sounds like a big number, but it's like kind of the same pace as inflation. So, I mean, there's a few different things. So the current plan at work, the, the 401k, is it a Roth or is it a traditional? I have option of both. I was just putting it in the pre-tax. Okay. 16-year-old, let's talk yeah. college. What are we doing? He doesn't know. We're trying to In other words, do you, have you saved money for college or not? No, we just kind of fly by the seat of our pants when that comes around. I don't love flying by the seat of my pants ever. I just want you to know that. So if for the 23 and the 21-year-old, you paid it out of those non-retirement assets, you call up the bro- the advisor and you say, uh, I need uh, 40 grand, I got to pay tuition bill. Like that? Yeah, we have a few loans. How much is outstanding in college loans? 40000 Okay, so you just pay that out. Okay. Are there any other liabilities floating out there that we should know about? Uh, we have a car payment. We did a short term, four years, but it's pretty high price. So it's about 800 bucks a month. Got to have a car. You're California, man. Uh, all right. How long are you going to work? You know, I don't plan to retire. I like your thing of just work forever because I love what I do. So. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. So here's the deal. For this year, I think that I would probably take 100000 of that rollover and turn it into a Roth. Ask your financial dudes about this. I think it makes sense because you'll be paying 22% on that money, okay? In some respects, uh, in terms of the contribution to the retirement account, I probably wouldn't do a pre-tax contribution because you're in such a low tax bracket. Got it. Understood. Does that, does that seem reasonable to you? You know, I feel like we have enough after tax that I was trying to limit that capacity. We talked to our CPA and he suggested that we do up to 80000 mm-hmm. uh, which keeps us in uh, the lowest tax bracket. Which would mean that in addition to your $50,000 salary, you could only convert thirty. Yeah, but if I take 75% and put it in 401k, I reduce my taxable income. Doesn't it compound the problem of doing a pre-tax contribution, though, in the end? Do you know what I mean? It kind of seems like it's a wash. But, I mean, I think that that's fine. You could certainly do that. If you put 75% contribution and then you start converting up to $81,000, sure, you could do that. I'm just wondering why you wouldn't – I mean, you're never going to be in the 12% tax bracket again, Right. So you could do that, but I wonder whether it makes sense to do even more. That's what I would be interested in finding out because I'm guessing that, you know, you're going to be, your top bracket's going to be 24% next year. I would ask the CPA, is there wisdom in trying to convert up to the 22%, top of the 22% bracket and see what, see what the CPA says. I will. I will. If you somehow decide that you are going to convert more, just make sure that your advisor knows that and that you're going to have a tax bill to pay in April, you know, that you just keep the information flow going. I would consider whether it makes sense to convert at 22% because it sounds to me like your guy's going to keep working, right? You're going to, so you're already going to be above 200. You're probably going to keep making more. And so that means that you're kind of squarely finding yourself in the 24% bracket And I'm not sure that's going to change so much when you retire. If you would like to run a scenario by us, all you need to do is go to the website, jillonmoney.com and click the contact us button. Don't forget on the website, there are links to all sorts of cool things. We've got our service called Jill on Money Live for $35. You have access to quarterly live webinars and special video content. We also have our YouTube show, which is called Jill on Money, powered by the compound. You definitely want to check it out. You can subscribe to this show on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. And of course, try to lift someone up. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 